this is the solution to WEX uh, M03. Uh, okay, so uh, many students uh, looked at this question on the midterm exam and uh, basically uh, came to the conclusion, I have no idea how to, how to do this exercise. Okay. Well, uh, there's, a, there's a reason why you, know, uh, you, you didn't know. Uh, and, it's the same, and it's the same reason why the question was, uh, was asked. And that is that uh, in, a, in a calculus course, the first time that uh, you learn uh, integration, uh, you uh, are, are at risk of falsely connecting uh, uh, two different things and thinking they're the same thing. So uh, in order to explain what, how to answer this question, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, explain the reason why this question is asked in the first place. So, uh, so uh, this is the reason why the question is asked in the first place. So. The first, uh, the first uh, thing is that uh, integral is signed area. So that's what it is. So specifically, uh, in grade school, <coughs> uh, you learn you know, how to find uh, areas of things, like, you know, so like areas of rectangles, triangles, uh, circles, trapezoids, a few other things. Uh, and you learn how to find, uh, you know, volumes of uh, various shapes. <coughs> So that's what uh, you, you do in grade school, but to, in calculus, you know, we want to find uh, the area of uh, shapes that uh, may not, you know, and, and were not uh, discussed in, um, in, in grade school. So, you know, here's, a, here's an example shape. Uh, so that's uh, just a horizontal line, two vertical lines, and uh, this cap, this hat that the, that, the, that the shape is wearing is just given by the graph of a function. <coughs> so this area here, uh, the area of that shape Uh, is given by this formula, integral a to b of f of x dx. Uh, so, in particular, that means that uh, that means that uh, this um, this definition uh, is more general than what uh, you learned in grade school. So, in particular, if this is the circle of radius. If this is the circle of radius 4, the top half of the circle of radius 4, uh, so square root of 4 squared minus x squared, uh, the top half of the circle radius 4, <clears throat> well, that means that uh, this left, this leftmost point is negative 4 and this rightmost point is positive 4. <clears throat> that also means that uh, you can immediately conclude uh, that the integral from negative 4 to 4 of the square root 
of uh, 4 squared minus x squared uh, dx because uh, because because of that uh, identification that uh, integral is this area <coughs> that's telling you uh, that uh, well you just take the formula for the circle of radius 4 where, which you learned in grade school so that would be pi radius squared and then divide by 2 so that's that's the answer uh, to uh, to this so like uh, no further consideration or calculation is uh, is necessary to uh, to just jump to the end because uh, integral is uh, is signed area now uh, these two pictures uh, notice that uh, the graph the red stays above the uh, x-axis <coughs> and uh, as, a, as a result uh, you know we haven't really seen the signed area signedness <coughs> so just to remind you of that um, you know the way the integral works so a to b so something like this so here's some uh, nice looking uh, shape there Uh, so if this is uh, y is uh, f of x, and this uh, is the x-axis, meaning that uh, the graph has a positive height here and negative height there and positive height there, that means that uh, this shape kind of has like uh, three pieces. Like that. And uh, the way the integral works is that uh, these two pieces, uh, their area will be accounted for positively, and uh, this piece, its area will be accounted, <coughs> accounted for uh, negatively. Now, the reason why is because uh, if you consider this right there, so I'm going to do the calculus eyeball and uh, have a real close look at uh, at uh, that that right there so from the from the calculus point of view <coughs> that's like a uh, a very very thin rectangle and uh, when you're looking at it <coughs> you first uh, follow the first axis okay uh, so now that uh, because uh, that is a right arrow uh, and it's also in agreement with uh, the orientation of the x-axis. That's a that's a positive. <coughs> and then from there, we go up to meet the curve. So we go up like that, <coughs> and uh, make a little rectangle. And uh, that means that uh, this, with the rule that you first follow the first axis and then the second. That means that uh, we make a swirl that looks like this. And uh, that's the orientation of the underlying space. <coughs> so as a result, uh, because, uh, because this agrees with that, they're both counterclockwise, that means that uh, this rectangle is accounted uh, positively. Whereas, uh, <coughs> if we look, uh, this one again with the with the calculus eyeball. So look at it uh, very closely. <coughs> uh, again, uh, we've got a little uh, base. It's too small to see, but uh, with the calculus eyeball, we can zoom in on it. <coughs> And once we move, uh, once we move to the right a little bit, uh, then to meet the curve, we've got to go down, so like this, <coughs> and that makes uh, that rectangle like this. And so the orientation of this rectangle is clockwise. 
Uh, now, the orientation of the underlying space is counterclockwise, which means that uh, this rectangle has an area, but uh, it is accounted negatively. So, that's what uh, the integral is saying. So, in particular, in particular, uh, you know, we've got uh, the in rectangle, and you can just look at the notes for this. We've we've written this a hundred times. The in the in rectangle uh, estimate uh, estimate. for uh, the signed area uh, that is the summation from i is 1 to n of f of ci delta x and uh, what that's uh, what that's saying is that uh, every one of these terms <coughs> So every one of them uh, is the area of some rectangle where the base is delta x, and then the height is uh, f of ci. Now, I happen to draw a, uh, a picture where uh, the, the orientation is positive, uh, but, you know, it could just as well, that, that's, this picture would be like that, uh, would be like if we were there, but uh, if we were here, it would, be, it would look more like that picture. So what this is saying is add up the signed areas of in rectangles. So notably, what I want you to observe about this is that uh, this is saying that we have to we have to uh, evaluate in order to construct this we have to evaluate uh, <coughs> function little f uh, n times uh, and we're going to do this in the interior of the interval a to b. So like, uh, you know, it's all of these evaluations of f are occurring in here. So now the, the integral that is to say the exact value of the signed area is uh, we say, well, let's let the number of rectangles go to infinity. Uh, so that's uh, the limit as n goes to infinity of the summation from i is 1 to n of f of ci delta x. So that's saying, uh, without the limit, that's exactly this. So that's the n rectangle estimate. And then we're saying, let the number of uh, rectangles go to infinity, but do understand that's also saying the number of times we evaluate uh, little f in the interior of a to b, so the number of evaluations is also going to infinity. So this is equal to, this is the definition of the integral. So this is the definition. So, in particular, when you write this, when that's written, it means that. Okay? This is a, a short way to write that. Uh, what I want you to observe about this is that uh, this is what this represents. This represents infinitely many evaluations of little f in the interior of a 
of a to b. So that's what uh, that means. So now, if this is where, if this was the end of the story, uh, if if uh, that's what was actually required to evaluate an integral, then uh, you know, integral calculus would not, uh, you know, there'd be no point in having the course. So there's little hints that it's not really that way because, for example. Uh, notice to do this integral, we just uh, we could just use a formula, right? We didn't have to, uh, we didn't in fact have to evaluate that expression at all. N uh, no evaluations were necessary uh, because uh, in the end, this integral was talking about a shape, uh, and we already knew a formula for its area. So now here's the 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 reason why integral calculus is a thing. So, the reason why integral calculus is important the fundamental theorem calculus. It says if in the first place the integral exists. Now that's a that's a technical matter. Uh, in our class we don't really uh, we don't really venture out into uh, into the mathematical areas where uh, integrals don't exist, so this uh, particular issue doesn't really come up in our class. But uh, anytime you're making, uh, you know, very technical points about an object, you've got to verify that uh, that object uh, exists. Because uh, uh, if it doesn't exist, anything that you say about it uh, is automatically true if the if the object doesn't exist. Uh, so if if uh, the uh, integral exists. And uh, furthermore, if you know an antiderivative, of little f. So in particular, you know that uh, the antiderivative of little f of x dx is uh, big F of x plus a constant. So if the integral exists and you know an antiderivative of the left, then uh, the integral from a to b of f of x dx is equal to, now, here's the thing, is that uh, remember that uh, by definition what this is saying, what this thing on the left is, this represents infinitely many evaluations of little f in the interior of a to b. Okay, so that's what that is. The fundamental theorem of calculus is saying that uh, actually uh, you don't have to do infinitely many evaluations of f. You can actually do, uh, in the first place, instead of evaluating little f, we'll evaluate big F. And uh, in particular, we'll do this thing called a boundary evaluation. So, uh, you know, that means uh, evaluate this twice, once at uh, uh, the left endpoint once at the right endpoint and then subtract. So what this is saying is this is saying two uh, evaluation of notably you change the function being evaluated from little f to big F and you also change the location of where the evaluations occur so in particular, this is uh, on the boundary of A 
to be. So, so there's, there's three changes here. So the left-hand side is saying infinitely many eval evaluations. The right-hand side is saying two evaluations. And uh, two is uh, less than infinity. So uh, that means that, uh, you know, that's a great cost savings. Infinitely many evaluations, two evaluations. Okay? Uh, notice that the function being evaluated also changes. This one is saying you need to evaluate uh, little f. Uh, this one is saying that uh, you evaluate big F, uh, an antiderivative of little f. Okay. Furthermore, these evaluations are occurring uh, on the interior of A to B, which means that uh, there all of all of these infinitely many evaluations are occurring like inside. Okay, they're all occurring inside. Whereas uh, these two evaluations are occurring on the boundary has a D in it. So only at the left boundary and right boundary. Okay. So what this is saying, what the fundamental theorem of calculus is saying, is that uh, we've got all this idea about integral. Integral is signed area. That's what it is. It's the signed area of an object. Uh, if you already have a geometric formula, like the formula for a circle, then, uh, well, you can start using those uh, formulas. Uh, but uh, if you don't have such formulas, what the integral is doing, by definition, is it breaks the shape into infinitely many uh, infinitesimal rectangles. You find the area of each one, uh, and then, you know, you let, uh, you let the, the, you can estimate it with n rectangles, then you let the number of rectangles become infinite, and that's the integral. And notably, uh, you know, that's just the definition. Now, the fundamental theorem of calculus, what it is, is it's a particularly convenient way to evaluate an integral. So the FTC is a particularly convenient way to evaluate an integral. <clears throat> and here's the, the notable issue, and this is where students go wrong on this question. So the thing I'm about to write is the reason, uh, if you could not answer this question, I'm about to write down what I suspect is the reason. But it is not the only way. So the, uh, the, the fault that uh, the error that students fall into is that uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus is so powerful that it is used quite often and the error that students seem to fall into is they think that uh, integration and the fundamental theorem of calculus are the same thing and they're not. So, they're not the same thing. So, in particular, on this question, uh, on question M03, uh, this formula is written down only so you can understand the picture better. But in fact, on this exercise, you will not need or use the FTC. So many students uh, talked, you know, asked me to uh, talk about this question. In the end, uh, what, um, what uh, the student said is, they said, I don't know how to integrate that. 
I don't know how to integrate that, and uh, what, what student really means. So student, uh, uh, student says, I don't know how to integrate. Uh, that thing there. The integral from uh, 0 to x of square root of 4 squared minus t squared dt. Okay, uh, that's what uh, the students report. But uh, the truth, or more nearly the truth, anyway, is uh, what they mean is that, uh, what they really mean is, uh, I don't know how to anti-differentiate I don't know how to anti-differentiate uh, the square root of 4 squared minus t squared dt. And therefore, I can't use the FTC. And then, there, and then the logical conclusion is, uh, of the student is that um, is that uh, therefore they can't answer the exercise. Well, uh, in fact, in our class we don't know how to anti-differentiate this. Uh, it's possible to do it, but uh, you need to know some trigonometry, and trigonometry is not part of our class. Uh, so effectively, because trigonometry is not part of our class, uh, we can't, uh, can't anti-differentiate it. And, and to that extent, the student is right. They can't use the fundamental theorem of calculus. But the fact remains that uh, you will not need or use the fundamental theorem of calculus on this exercise. So, uh, to be clear, this area the shaded area is f evaluated at 1. That's what it looks like. And uh, this area is f evaluated at 3. And this area is uh, f evaluated at x. So what uh, you need to imagine is that uh, you can grab hold of this fence post, this x, and move it back and forth. So that uh, if we move it at, uh, a little bit to the left, uh, there'd be a little bit less uh, area. If we move it to the right, there'd be a little more area. So this uh, fence post can move back and forth. So what is the minimum value of this function? So notably, uh, the, permi the permissible locations of x are between 0 and 4. So what this is saying is that uh, um, what is the smallest shaded area we can get? And where does it occur? Well, if you just take this x, grab it, and uh, pull it all the way to x is 0, which is permitted, uh, then there's no shaded area whatsoever. All right? So uh, at x equal to 0, the picture is, uh, looks like this.
So the shaded area is uh, is zero. Which is to say that uh, f evaluated at zero is zero. That's the minimum uh, of the function. So this is, you know, to in analogous language, what is the largest possible shaded area? All right. So the largest uh, possible shaded area is that, uh, well, this one is when we move the x all the way to 0. So that's, the, that's making the shaded area as small as possible. And then the domain says uh, x has to be between 0 and 4. So we can move the x all the way to 4 there, because that's, uh, that's 4. And uh, that's going to give the largest possible. So at, uh, at x is 4, the picture uh, looks like this. So this is uh, zero there. And this is all shaded. can't get any more than that. Uh, so the shaded area is uh, one quarter. Of uh, the circle of radius four. Which is to say that uh, f evaluated at 4 should be pi r squared over 4. Well, that'd be uh, 16 pi over 4, so that'd be 4 pi. Again, notice that uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus was, uh, was never used. Uh, the point is that uh, the picture is telling you how the area is accumulated. If you move the x to 0, there's no area. So the area, uh, the, si the signed area has to be 0. Uh, if you move the x all the way to the right, like so, then uh, that's, the, that's the, the largest possible area. And uh, then that is, a, that is a one fourth of a shape that you, uh, who, uh, and you already know a formula for the area of that shape. Good. Finally, what is the slope charge? Again, this is about uh, decreasing and increasing. So to understand uh, how to do this, you've got to understand uh, what, uh, what, uh, what decreasing and, and increasing mean. So decreasing means, uh, it means that an increase uh, in the input uh, results in a decrease of the output. That's what increase mean. That's what decreasing means, and uh, increasing is uh, means an increase in the input results in an increase in the output. That's what. Uh, increasing means. So in particular, uh, the way that uh, you usually look at this is a uh, is that, uh, you know, you look at the plot of a function. <coughs> so something like, uh, you know, like this, say. And then if we uh, consider this uh, 
particular point. And if we uh, make an increase in the input, so that uh, you know this is this is a, a small little increase uh, in the input, uh, that results in a decrease in the output. So that's uh, you know remember that uh, this is a positive element. Uh, of the input because uh, it's in agreement with the uh, with the direction of the input, uh, whereas this is a negative element of uh, the output axis because it's in disagreement. So that's what uh, that looks like. And then increase uh, you know the the idea. like this. So then uh, here, if we make a uh, an increase in the input, so we, uh, we make a positive uh, increment of the input, that results in a positive Increment of the uh, of the output. So that's that's the definition of it, of, of increasing and decreasing. So here's the idea: is that uh, now the way that uh, we're looking at this function, uh, it's not drawn like this. Rather, it's drawn like this. So. Here's this uh, part of the circle of radius 4, so like that. And let's uh, consider that x is currently right here. So that's x there. And uh, this area. is uh, f of x, that area there. So now the question is, is that uh, what, if we, uh, what if we increase the input uh, just a little bit? What if we uh, move it, uh, say, that much? Uh, that means that uh, it's going to, uh, we, we move it over to the right, and uh, as a result, we pick up this uh, this new area, and uh, that area is positive. <clears throat> so, uh, so the new area. is a positive area because, well, it's area that's accumulated above the x-axis. Therefore, uh, f is increasing. So wherever x is, as long as it's not at the right endpoint, uh, every time we increase uh, x, it results in uh, a new amount of positive area. Therefore, <clears throat> the, uh, the slope chart looks like this. So 0 to 4 because that's, uh, that's the whole domain. And uh, it's just increasing. So to understand this question and questions like it, uh, you've got to... Uh, be familiar with what uh, integration means. Integration is uh, signed area. It's signed area. And uh, when you're integrating something, uh, 
and the resulting shape is a formula that you learned from grade school, then uh, you can use, uh, well, what I mean is that uh, the shape has an area formula that you learned from grade school. You can just use that grade school formula. You need to keep track of whether or not you're supposed to count it positively or negatively, uh, but uh, you, can, you can do that. Uh, but another way, a particularly awesome way to do, to evaluate an integral is the fundamental theorem. But it's not the only way. And then uh, being comfortable with, with uh, integral being uh, signed area, that's uh, how you navigate uh, this kind of question.